Hello everybody, welcome to the Producer Wannabe Show. Today we have a very special guest. He's a producer, a very great one. He's produced over 25 movies. Among them are World's Greatest Dad, starring Robin Williams, Walls, not the one with Jason Momoa, it's the one with Michael Shannon, and Last Chance Harvey, starring Dustin Huffman and Emma Thompson. So, He's also produced or executive produced series such as The New Yorker Presents. There is also a series titled First Step. That's an inspiring series that's also available on YouTube. So you have to check it out. He's also made a wide range of contents for brands like Adidas, Audi, ESPN, and etc. So without further ado, here he is, Tim Perel. Thank you. Thank you for agreeing to be interviewed and welcome to my humble channel. <laughs> Good to be here. So, the first question for you. Why being a producer? Why did you choose to be a producer? It's a good question. It's a big question. Um, the question is, did I choose to be a producer or did it choose me? Um, you know, I've been producing for 25 years now, so the why is constantly evolving and changing. Um, but I came to it as a movie lover. Uh, and I guess for me, my sort of light bulb moment was when I realized that I could also have a career within the worlds that I love. So I started out in the music business, I was oh. a big music fan, um, and always a big film goer, and particularly an independent film goer. And when I began to understand that there was actually a career you could have within that space, um, everything opened up for me. And, um, you know, for me, I've always loved the creative side as well as the business side. I need the intersection of those two things, business and creative and strategy, um, to make me happy. I can't just live in one of those spaces. And as a producer, you're constantly juggling creative business and strategy and to me that is just always what's been satisfying and exhilarating to me about the process but how did you become you said you started in the music industry how mm -hmm. did you get into the film industry and how you know did you start from the bottom mm -hmm. and how did you work your way up to be the producer um so i i first so when i was working in the music business just after graduating university in new york my oldest and closest friend was at Columbia uh, University in New York getting his master's as a f director. And he dragged me in to work on a lot of the short films that he and his students were making. And, uh, and that was my first exposure to being a part of filmmaking. I was certainly going to the movies almost every night in New York, but when I wasn't out seeing music. Um, but working on those Columbia short films was my first sort of experience and exposure to what it meant to be part of making something. Um, and you know, when you're working on a student movie, you are the PA, you're the producer, you're the AD, you're the caterer, you're the truck driver, you're everything. Um, and so it was a full immersion in that world. And it was clear that it was something that um, excited me and satisfied me. And then my next step was, um, to sort of see how I could work in that space. And through a sort of really bizarre series of very lucky circumstance, um, I ended up having an informational meeting with a guy named John Pearson, who at the time uh, was a big figure in the independent film world. He had been involved with seminal movies like She's Gotta Have It, Spike Lee's first movie, Roger, uh, Michael Moore's first movie, Roger and Me, um, Errol Morris's first movie, The Thin Blue Line. And he was somebody who invested in films only by first-time filmmakers oh, wow. and then acted as their sales agent. He, he pioneered the sales agency business. There was no such thing before John got involved. And through a series of mutual acquaintances, he took a meeting with me. We spent three hours arguing I, about the um, validity of short films. And the next day he called me and said, look, I've always wanted to hire somebody and I've never found that person. Do you want a job? And I took the job and he's been a friend and mentor ever since. But through my experience with him was really how I began to understand what the role of a producer is and even more importantly, sort of the role of the market and the, how the market interacts with the content that you're making, even when it's just on a super small scale. 
Um, I then went and decided I wanted to get my master's and I went to London to the Royal College of Art to get my master's. And I came back and worked again for John. But while I was in London, I made a lot of short films. The program I was with had relationships with BBC and Channel 4 and I was able to develop and make films for them. I also spent to make money, spent a lot of time production managing and first ADing um, a lot of music videos at the time. Uh, and then I came back, worked again with John while developing my first feature film. So your master's also in film? Yes. yes. Right. So the first project with him, were you directly a producer or what did you do? No, John wasn't a producer. John was an investor and a salesperson. So I, my job with him was he probably received 500 at least uh, rough cuts of films by first time filmmakers that needed money. Uh -huh. And I looked at, I was the front lines. I looked at all of them and made recommendations to him. Um, so for me, the, 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 the experience working with him as a producer was learning about the market and learning about the idea of audience and, and connecting your content to an audience. It wasn't about the nuts and bolts of producing. Right. That I learned when I went to school and when I worked making movies, uh, making short films and commercials in London. Right, so when you made the short films and you're already the producer of that yes. short. So what about the feature film, the first feature film? Well, so my <laughs> first feature, again, when I came back from London, the my high school best friend who was at the Columbia program, who was the person who dragged me into the into working on their shorts, was graduating, was developing what was going to be his first feature film, and I worked with him to develop it. Together we raised some money, and that was my first feature film. All right. So, uh, I think for someone who aspires to be a producer, you know, the first barrier is how do we convince people with money hmm. to produce because we are nobody. We don't have experience yet. So how did you convince you know, people with money that you can produce? With great difficulty. You know, I had made at that point a lot of short films um, and my friend, the writer director, John, had gone to undergrad and studied film and made an award-winning short film, gone to Columbia and made some short films. So we had some work, but we didn't have any feature films. And so it was very difficult. We had to raise a lot of very small pieces of money from a lot of people. And it was about having a lot of meetings for a little return. And it's about you know real commitment and perseverance and the ability to deal with people saying no to you all the time and also sort of being able to take a no and every once in a while turn it into a yes. So in other words, you have to start from short films, uh, maybe cheaper films. Your first film should be as small as possible, I think, so that you're not trying to raise uh, an amount of money that you, your experience can't justify. And then it really is about passion and commitment and um, but also being able to like fully understand the market. My experience allowed me to have conversations that were about the market to investors, about where the film we were trying to make sat in the marketplace. So I could make a compelling argument that, yes, you were making an exciting indie film, but here were its prospects, here were its financial prospects. Yeah, that's very true. And again, at what point that you successfully being able to raise for your first feature movie? Mm -hmm. We raised it in pieces and we raised enough to shoot it. We didn't have enough to go beyond shooting it. We shot it. We used what we shot to raise more money and took it step by step. And in many respects, it's because we didn't know a lot. I could never do what I did on that movie again. The more you know, the harder it becomes. We, didn't, we knew nothing, really, and we just jumped off the cliff. All right. With a dream, you know, which is part of it. You've got to be willing to jump off the cliff and, wow. and be exposed. All right. Being a producer, based on what you just told me, mm -hmm. at least you have to know, you have to understand what is a good story. And on top of that, what kind of story sells? Mm -hmm. So how did you know this story will work? This story will sell? Well, nobody knows. That's the magic answer and if everybody had that golden key then it would be much easier so there's no guarantees it's a very risky business what might make sense now might not make sense three years from now when the movie's finally done but you cannot live in a in a bubble as a producer you have to be aware of what's happening in the film business but also what's happening in the culture 
the wider culture, both culturally, mm -hmm. socially, politically. You've got to be constantly looking at movements and trends in the larger sort of media ecosystem. But you can't just put your head in the sand. You've got to be reading everything. You've got to be reading all the business uh, publications in the movie business, yeah. all the media publications. You have to be immersed in the business and the culture. So you could understand that. Yeah, and that way you can make your own predictions and inferences about what's happening and does what you have work in that market or being able to identify. And look, when you make a small movie, your movie doesn't need to connect with a huge audience. You need to yeah. be able to identify its core audience. And your size of your movie needs to be commensurate with that core audience. But to do that, you have to be aware of what's happening. All right. and what's working, what's getting made, what's not working, why is it not working? Which one's more difficult, making a small movie or a big movie? They're, <laughs> they're difficult in different ways. Making a small movie has you know phenomenal challenges because you never have the resources to execute what you want to execute so you are constantly begging and borrowing and stealing to get what you need um, which is its own kind of drain um, with greater resources comes different kinds of flexibility with production but comes a whole other kind of pressure when you have greater resources it usually means you have a studio financing your movie and there's a different kind of pressure on you as a producer. So there's just different different exhaustions that you face in either ones, different anxieties, different stresses, uh, different pain points. It's very interesting listening to you about being a producer. However, you recommended me a book from Christine Vachon, mm -hmm. A Killer Life, and based on that book, it seems like being a producer is the hardest job in the world. <laughs> You know, so what is your take on that? Uh, what about your own life? You know, how is life being a producer? It it is a roller coaster. Um, it is, you know, at times it is so exciting and super exhilarating and um, and magical, and at times really hard, really lonely as a producer, really isolating um, and exhausting. Um, you know, sometimes you feel like it's more of an affliction, like it's something that happened to you and you can't get out of. But that's why you need to be driven by something. You need to be driven by a passion for movies and for storytelling and for the people around you that you're working with. But it is not an easy life, you know. And as I said, you know, there are certain producers who are operating on a huge scale, making huge movies, making tons of money. Um, and certain things are easier for them. But when you get on a bigger canvas, a bigger scale, there are different kinds of extreme pressures on you. When you're producing, you're at the center of it, you're leading it, and you're responsible for everything. And that's a lot of pressure. So it's passion that keeps you a yes. producer. All right, so- Or you know. stupidity. <laughs> stupidity. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you said you've lived 25 years as a producer. Yeah. If you look back, is there any anything like um, an experience or your work that you feel, you know, very proud of or very grateful for throughout your career? I have to say, I mean, there are a lot of things that I'm proud of and grateful for. Um, one of the things that I'm most grateful for is that I've been able to travel all over the world, making films, presenting films, um, and as a result of that, getting to meet people from all over the world. Um, which has been a really exciting and nourishing part of the process for me. I've met, for me, the most, the, my favorite part is collaborating with creators and creative people at the center of it. And I've met just an extraordinary group of people along the way. And that's what satisfies me. I can't say there's like one single thing that I'm most proud of. Like each film is its own sort of miraculous accomplishment that felt impossible many times along the way. And when you finally get it out in the world, there is an incredible sense of, exhaustion but real satisfaction from it and not every movie turns out the way you want um, be it either the content or the commercial success of it but every movie in its own way is impossible and so you're proud when you actually get make a movie that is true to what you tried to make what is an advice you would give to somebody who wants to be a producer like you you need passion you need perseverance you need grit you need resilience, um, you need 
um, a little bit of just blind trust. Um, and um, you need to, you know, you need to be focused and you need to know what's going on. You need to pay attention to the world. All right, the last question. Are you working on any project now? Yeah, I'm not shooting anything right now, but um, I have maybe 10 or 11 movies in various Ten. stages of, but that could be everything from waiting on a new draft of a script right. to a couple of movies that I'm trying to get financed right now to a couple of movies that are ready, but we need cast on. They're, they take a long time. So you always have different movies at different points in the pipeline. A couple of TV things that are early stage development. Uh, um, in your in your experience, how long is a movie takes to make? From idea to market, yes, as short as three or four years, three and as years. long as I have a couple movies that I've been working on for eight or nine years now. Wow, that maybe will be still another few years down the road. Wow, that's that really takes a long time. Patience. You gotta believe in them. Yeah, and sometimes you realize, okay, I don't believe in this one anymore. I'm gonna let it go after a few years. Is there any vacancy for intern, for example? <laughs> <laughs> Not at the moment, but sometimes, yes, yeah, sometimes. But when we get up and running and shooting, yes, definitely. All right. So, yeah. Okay. So, Guess this for me. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure, sure. So, I think that's our interview today. All right. Thank, thank you, you very much for everything, for having, you know, for being here to be interviewed by, by me. Thank you. So, that's all. Thank you, Tim. All right. Thank you. Good luck for all your movies. Good luck to you. <laughs> Thanks. Yay.